hypocrisies and misinformation spread by right-wing Christian extremists never ceases to amaze us all. By now we are all well aware to some degree about the scandal facing the Duger family from the Learning Channel uh, 19 Kids and Counting show and the events surrounding Josh Duger's molestation of his sisters. While it was believed that Josh's allegations only stemmed from his abuse of his sisters years ago, fresh allegations seem to, to point to another victim in his family, his five-year-old sister, Josie Brooklyn Duggar. In addition, both the parents and sisters have spoken out on the issues with Jessa Duggar, 22, saying that Josh is not a child molester or a pedophile, saying, that is so overboard and a lie, really. I mean, people get mad at me for saying that but I can say this because I was one of his victims. Of course, this is typical of a victim of a traumatic event, such as a sexual abuse. Allega uh, sexual abuse. As psychologically speaking, victims tend to create a defense mechanism to cope with what has happened to them and often internalize their emotions. We might even be so bold to say that there is a, definitely a level of Stockholm Syndrome in this case, as Jessa is a the sister of her abuser and thus has unconditional love for her family as well as the fact that her unconditional love to her family extends to one well, of the fundamentalist beliefs that they have and that is only coupled in its insanity given that the family's fundamentalist Christian beliefs are very well present there. When someone is in your ear telling you that God wanted this to happen for a reason, God wanted to test you, it often leads the individual who was abused thinking that it was their fault and brainwashed to that idea. Often this goes so far as the family even telling them that it was their fault and going so far as to say that God was punishing you for your sins. But let us look at the real hypocrisy and lies uh, behind all this. While the family tries to make up insidious lies and justify Josh Duggar's actions, the truth, as well as the fact that information can be accessible to those who ask for it, will reveal itself. The family previously stated that Josh's records were sealed by Springdale Police Department. However, given that a police report was filed after Josh was 18, he was therefore legally an adult and therefore no seal was warranted or necessary at that point. Thus, this leaves the media open to be allowed access under the Freedom of Information Act. Ernest Cate, the Springdale City Attorney who revealed the case files that were granted release by Springdale Police Chief Ka uh, Kathy O'Kelly, got an uh, FOIA request from a media outlet, outlet and thus was required to release the information about the case under the Federal Act, and State Act for that matter, with the names of the minors in the report just being redacted. Therefore, all of this was done legally, and the Duggars have no legal or legitimate case for trying to cover up their son's crimes. Of course, the Duggars and their faint conservative twat nozzle supporters are using Fox News as their propaganda outlet, screaming that they are victims of a left-wing agenda by the city attorney and the media, and the insensitive media with supporters such as Mike Huckabee and Fox News pinhead Trace Gallagher who are trying to justify and omit information to fit their beliefs and trying to coerce their audience into believe, believing their load of tripe. Gallagher states that Arkansas Freedom of Information Act says that the records of a juvenile shall remain confidential and shall not be the subject of disclosure under the FOI. That is true, but by both Arkansas and federal law, the juvenile, in this case, Josh Duger, was already above eight, the age of 18 and above the age of consent when the police report was filed, so there is no basis for sealing the records, and thus the records are not subject to confidentiality and could be disclosed to the public record for those who wish to seek informa more information on it. Therefore, Gallagher's arguments is baseless and valid, having been only made based upon the Duggars family's lies and his network's right-wing agenda to lie and, well, misappropriate the facts. Um, and of course, why shouldn't we expect anything else? I mean, after all, 
we are talking about a group of right-wing and Christian extremists who have been trying to undermine American politics and society and try and stalemate, stagnate, filibuster, oppose, blockade, and just plain stifle any progress to LGBT plus rights, calling trans people pedophiles and the rights of the right of gay marriage as a threat to America, a threat to society, a threat to religious freedom, a threat to traditional marriage, or just plain persecution or bullying of Christians. The very insanity and oppressor mentality of the right is pretty well established, but for the sake of argument, the only persecution or, or bullying done is by the right-wing Christian majority against the people they oppress by claiming those people are the ones oppressing them. It is very much similar to the white colonizer, white supremacist mentality that is held by Americans when they invade a third world country without really thinking about the hardships, death, and feelings to, do, to those they occupy the land of. But I digress. The real hypocrisy lies within the right wing and Christian extremist groups in which it is okay to cover up sexual abuse, rape, incest, and violence when it is convenient for them, but LGBT plus people and their supporters are the real monsters here, right? Take for another example of a Republican and former Speaker of the House, Dennett Heister, who is alleged to, uh, alleged to have abused an Illinois man when he was in high school when Heister was a wrestling coach there at the time. While there has been no response from Haster, his family, or the right-wing cronies at this time, it is inevitable that they most likely will try to downplay the accusations, cover it up, and, and or just justify the entire thing. Let's humor one more example of how Newt Gingrich cheated on his wife and was married three times. One wife he served divorce papers to while she was in the hospital being treated for cancer. So once again, it's okay to sexually abuse, rape, steal, lie, and commit other forms of violence and commit adultery, all of which I believe are violations of the most sacred laws of the Bible, the Ten Commandments, but we'll just ignore that because LGBT plus people and their supporters are the real enemy here, right? Let us also take into account the fact that just recently in Texas, a state where the pseudoscience creationism is allowed to be taught in place of evolution in schools, where LGBT plus student activists were sent home because of their gay okay shirt t-shirts that were to show support and raise awareness about bullying, or to show support uh, for one of their classmates and raise awareness about bullying uh, that one of their uh, bullied gay classmates was subjected to. The, fa uh, the fascist administration of Phobian Middle School sent them home citing any disruptive or distractive mode of clothing or appearance that adversely impacts the educational process is not permitted. So teaching a pseudoscience based on and backed up by absolutely no facts at all it's other than the Bible and other Christian idiocy instead of evolution, which is backed up and uh, back based on and backed up by, oh that's right, science and facts, is okay, but apparently a shirt that supports a gay student who is being bullied and raising awareness to stop bullying is apparently a distraction. That really says a lot for a backwards thinking religious fanatical redneck hotbed like Texas, notorious for its hatred of gay people, black people, Mexicans, science, and basically anything that doesn't conform to a right wing political and Christian religious agenda. In other words, Texas is the freaking poster child for the freaking Republican Party and any Christian fundamentalist bitch nuggets. As the LGBTQ Nation stated in a June 6, 2015 article, outside of just issue advocacy, religious right figures attempted to pick any criticism of their political positions and records as a direct attack on their freedoms and religious beliefs, suggesting that their deeply held beliefs should somehow give them immunity from political reproach. This is very true. Any opposition aimed at the right-wing forces these days is attacked and depicted by the media, by right-wing media, like, uh, like Fox News, as being an attack on religious beliefs, liberal propaganda attacks, or mudslinging and is often almost seen as a direct attack on the right wing by con conservative pundits. When in actuality, it is, it is simply just people stating their opinion, stating the facts, and just plain having a different view. But somehow that is just a, seen as a war on the right wing, 
and thus a war on America, as if the right-wing extremists are some sort of freaking patriots or guardians of liberty. They have no more right to be judge of what is American and what is constitutional, just as they have no right to be the judges for their Christian God, as their beliefs are not the same as another, and frankly, to even think that they know what is constitutional and Christian is just plainly laughable, as they are frankly some of the most demonic and fascist individuals on the planet. And maybe that's why the U.S. military, who seems to regard, who they seem to regard to the utmost pride, at least while people are in uniform, once said that evangelicalism is the number one threat in, to the United States. Ouch, that's going to hurt their overinflated egos just a bit. We should really expect nothing less of these fascist individuals. They are relentless, soul-sucking vampires that will stop at nothing to ensure their ideological agenda is achieved and America is molded into their ideal regime, which is a Christian theocracy, a ruling class elitist oligarchy, and totalitarian regime based on conservative and religious doctrine. And yet they strike fear into people by making them believe that the threat is... the the threat to them is Sharia law being placed over the country when they themselves want to place Christian laws upon us all and make us subject to them. They are the, mo the full. They are full of the most utmost hypocrisy, and are a dangerous threat to us all. Like how McCarthyists persecuted and purged and relentlessly prosecuted communists in the 40s, 50s, and 60s. I think it is only fair we turn the tables and contain this right-wing extremist plague of fundamentalist and Tea Party cells and bring them down for trying to incite riots, stir dissent, and frankly what I can only describe as verbal terrorism and through, uh, through indoctrination and abuse. We must continue to fight against them, make sure the, the individual rights are protected, and that a certain level of freedom can continue to exist by using bourgeois law and their own arguments against them, pointing out their hypocrisies and lies, and calling them on their bullshit. I'm NorCal Nick, leader of the revolutionist movement, and this has been NorCal Corner. Peace. Watch me!